Good evening, everybody. I'd like to thank Dr. Gopal and Dr. Banerjee for this invitation. And I would be speaking on the bi uh, biomechanical principles of PCL and posterior lateral corner. Now, PCL is the stronger and the bigger of the two cruciate ligaments on the knee. It is attached on the anterior superior aspect of the middle femoral condyle, goes back and attaches to the facet between the two uh, condyles of the tibia. Posterior lateral corner consists of many structures uh, which are difficult to understand, but from a surgical point of view, uh, the surgeon needs to remove only three structures the fibular collateral ligament, the popliteus tendon, and the popliteal fibular ligament. The PCL is the primary restraint against uh, the posterior translation. It is the secondary restraint against the virus and the external rotation forces. It is injured, cl uh, classically described by an anterior blow to the upper tibia with the knee flex which is a dashboard injury. The other mechanisms are hyperflexion, hyperextension, virus or valgus. But the common scenario that we encounter in our daily practice uh, are the road traffic accidents which are combinations of all the above mentioned uh, mechanisms. The posterior lateral corner prevents excessive virus, posterior tibial translation and external rotation of tibia. The lateral collateral ligament is the prime restraint against virus whereas the popliteus tendon and the popliteal fibril ligament is a restraint against the external rotation. The mechanism of injury is excessive virus, external tibial rotation and a hyperextension. Isolated, isolated injuries of posterior lateral corners are uh, rare and they are mostly in combination with PCL or ACL. If we have to diagnose the PCL injury, uh, the posterior draw test is the most sensitive. But before we do, uh, we have to identify the posterior sag. If one fails to identify the posterior sag, the posterior draw test can be confused by anterior draw test. Cordyceps active test is also important for diagnosis. For the diagnosis of posterior lateral corner, we can palpate the lateral collateral ligament in the figure of four position. It is identified as a firm cord between the head of the fibula and the lateral epicondyle of femur. Uh, on varus laxity, uh, we can identify a lateral collateral ligament injury if it is only at 30 degrees of flexion. At zero degrees of flexion, this is combined with a cruciate ligament injury. The dial test is an important test for posterior lateral corner injury. Uh, if there is increased external rotation at 30 degree, it is isolated posterior lateral corner. If it is increased external rotation of uh, tibia at 90 degrees, it is PCL with posterior lateral corner. Now, if you do an arthroscopy in a PCL injured knee, the, uh, the direct findings that means pertaining to the PCL itself can be vari vari variable. You can see bony avulsion, mid substance tear or you might, you might find an elongated but intact PCL. The indirect findings could be a sloppy ACL, altered contact points between the tibia and the femur because of posterior subluxation and osteoarthritis changes in the medial tibiofibular uh, joint and petalofemoral joint. Now, lateral drive through sign is a sign which is seen in posterior lateral corner injuries that you can put your scope very easily uh, in the lateral compartment because of the injury of the posterior lateral corner. The indication for PCL reconstruction is a failure of a conservative treatment which happens in a grade 3. Grade 3 injury is uh, as shown on the right bottom picture. The tibia goes posterior to the femur. Normally you have an anterior offset of the tibia as compared to the femur but if it goes posterior it is grade 3. And when there is a multi ligament injury, you always do a surgical reconstruction. Now, when you are planning a surgery, uh, the question arises whether to do repair or a reconstructions. Repairs are possible only within first three weeks of the injury, and it is advised to augment these repairs with a graft. If you don't augment these with a graft, these repairs are bound to fail. So, in a sense, repairs are uh, useful only if there are bony avulsions. For soft tissue injury, you have to do a reconstruction. The other question is whether do you do uh, the reconstruction as a stretch procedure or in the same setting. The current literature shows that you have to repair all the ligament, uh, reconstruct all the ligaments at the same setting. They give better results than stretch procedures. So the principle of reconstruction is uh, to harvest uh, grafts of wood strength, drill tunnels at anatomical position, 
do fixation of these grafts under adequate tension using internal fixation devices after reducing the sub subluxations and you have to do a rehabilitation which is supervised and adequate so the popular grafts that are that can be used are the hamstring tendons quadriceps tendons with or without a patellar bone plug and the uh, bone patellar tendon bone the advantage of quadriceps tendon is that it can be uh, split to make a double bundle reconstruction split biceps can be used for uh, the posterior lateral corna allografts are not available in india there are two main methods to reconstruct the pcl the popular one is the transtibial where you drill a tunnel in tibia and the femur to fix the graft in the tibial inlay you drill a tunnel in the femur but you do not drill a tunnel in tibia you go at the back of the tibia and fix the graft using some internal fixation devices in both these methods you can reconstruct uh, either a single bundle which is the anterolateral bundle or both the bundles so if you are drilling in the femur so you drill the tunnel at the insertion anatomical insertion site as given in the diagram if you are doing a single bundle reconstruction you reconstruct the anterolateral bundle and if you are using the doing a double bundle reconstruction you drill two tunnels in the femur as shown in the diagram in the tibial inlay site you go to the back of the tibia uh, using a approach which is called a burks and shaffer's approach this is a approach which goes between the medial head of gastrocnemius and the semi membranosus you identify the the tibial insertion site of pcl make a trough there and fix the graft with any internal fixation device and then you pass the graft into the joint and into the femoral tunnel if you are using a tibial transtibial method you drill a tibial tunnel using a pcl jig aiming device uh, you cannot use a acl aiming device for the same you confirm your position using a image intensifier or putting your arthroscope in the posterior medial portal there are various methods to reconstruct the posterior lateral corner in india the larsen's method is the most popular where you pass uh, the graft in the fibular head and fix it to a point which is just anterior and superior to the lateral uh, epicondyle of the femur either you can use a spiked washer and a screw or you can use a interference screw after drilling a tunnel now once you have passed the graft you have to fix it in the pcl if your single bundle is used you are reconstruct the anterolateral bundle so you fix this graft after uh, tensioning it at 90 degrees uh, of flexion and you have uh, reversed the posterior shift and you have recreated the normal tibiofemoral offset for the posterior medial bundle you do tensioning at 0 degrees of flexion for the posterior medial graft uh, posterior lateral corner graft you tension the graft at 30 degrees of flexion valgus and internal rotation now in a long standing case of pcl with posterior lateral corner injury there is a varus thrust now it is important to uh, recognize this deformity and it is important that you do a high table osteotomy to correct this varus you can do this correction before the ligament reconstruction or at the same setting uh, there are two options of doing sto either open wedge or a closed wedge if you are using a closed wedge osteotomy osteotomy uh, it's important that you do not destroy the fibular head you do you do a osteotomy of the fibular shaft and it's important that you do not correct as you would do for osteoarthritis you just correct it to a neutral position so this is the algorithm uh, if you have a combined pcl and the posterior lateral corner injury you look for knee alignment if it's a normal you just do pcl and posterior lateral corner reconstruction uh, as described before if there is a varus you have to do a hto Uh, the ligament reconstruction can be done at the same setting or after the hto uh, the patient recovers from hto the causes of failures in the treatment uh, are mainly because of non anatomical repairs untreated varus malalignment and failure to reconstruct all the ruptured ligaments at the same setting now what is a non anatomical repairs that means you fix the graft using sutures to some other uh, soft tissue of the knee you don't use any internal fixation like interference screw or endo button then some people use extra articular iliotibial band augmentation for repairs this is not done uh, biceps uh, tenodesis advised by clancy also uh, doesn't good uh, doesn't give very good results the anatomical repairs is a graft at anatomical site fixed with some internal fixation device 
the diagrams on the le uh, left would show a transtibial PCL reconstruction, whereas the picture on the ri right bottom would show a tibial inlay reconstruction with the PCL uh, posterodental corner reconstruction. So, in conclusion, uh, when you examine the knee, do not confuse an anterior draws test with a posterior draws test. You have to identify the posterior sag, otherwise your diagnosis will be wrong. And once you have diagnosed one ligament injury, do not stop your examination there. Look actively look for other ligament injuries. That means the posterior corner injuries. And we are doing the during the surgery. You have to do anatomical reconstruction. There is no isometric points. You have to fix the grafts at anatomical positions, and you have to reconstruct all the ligaments at the same sitting. And if there is a virus at the knee, do HTO first. Thank you very much.